Good morning, everyone online. We are so glad that you decided to click on that link and to join us for our morning worship service. I am so glad you're here, and I have a nice friend with me today. I am just going to let him say his name. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Isaiah. All right, this is Isaiah, and Isaiah is a part of our, let me see, can you take a guess? Our CF Kids Ministry. And this month, they are on a unit called Giving. And I am going to allow Isaiah to just tell you guys a little bit about what he um, participated in and what he learned last week. So Isaiah, I'm going to let you take it away. Tell everybody, what did you do last week in CF Kids? What did I do? What What did I do is, as as um, what What did I do? There was, um, we wrote uh, we wrote letter, we wrote cards to the um, um to the church members. Oh, you guys wrote cards. Why did you guys do? Why did you guys decide to do cards to uh different church members? Because 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 we are grateful. Oh, and I hear that that lesson was all about being a cheerful what? Person. Yeah, a cheerful person and a cheerful giver. And you guys decided to give words of encouragement. I think the activity was called Make You Smile. And the children just wrote letters. They didn't know who they were writing letters to. We did, They wrote letters, they did pictures, and then we put them in envelopes and we just mailed them out to whoever our finger landed on when we went to the church directory. And how do you think that it made them feel when um, they received those cards? Uh, they, they felt, they, they felt, um, they felt hope, they felt cheerful, grateful of who they are. Yes, that is, oh, I love that word, hope. They felt hope. I even received some feedback from a few people that received their cards from you guys, and they were so excited. One person, I think, they just started crying because that is exactly what they needed at that moment. And you guys gave cheer to people. How do you feel? Um, I feel... I feel, uh, I feel helpful, I feel uh, grateful, I feel cheerful about who I am. Yes, and I am so, Isaiah, I, you are doing so well on this screen. I'm telling you guys, I just saw him a few minutes ago and I said, come on Isaiah, join me on the screen. And he cheerfully came to join me on this screen. They, the children are continuing their giving unit. And today they're going to be talking about sowing seeds, sowing seeds into the community, sowing seeds for children who might be in need. So I can't wait to bring another child to this screen on next week so they can give you a breakdown of what they learned about today. We have so much going on today in our church. Not only are we talking about favor today, and Pastor will be delivering once again a powerful, impactful word. Don't y'all just love how Pastor just preaches God's word? And it comes right at the time when we need it the most. So I can't wait to sit back and hear about Pastor preaching about uh, favor and um then we have our family giveaway for our diaper giveaway. So if you are a family in need or you know a family in need who might need a little diaper support to help them through this transition, please come on. Come on up to Covenant Faith between 115 and 215. And our outreach team, which is uh, led by Sister Dolita Hobson, they will be there to help serve your families if your families are in need. Um, so we are excited about everything that is happening. We have so much other things that will be going on soon. And once again, we are here to help you and everyone else believe that the best is yet to come. Get those notebooks out. Get it ready. Because when pastor is preaching, we want you to jot down those those key ideas and don't just jot them down and storm away we need you to apply them in your daily walk do you have anything else left to say no you want to tell tell the people to have a great week have a great week have a wonderful week remember the best is yet to come see ooh, ooh. i'm sorry see you later everyone If 
you've ever wondered how to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications when we go live, watch these steps. Type in Covenant Faith Chicago on YouTube's search bar. Find the logo that matches our church. Then click subscribe. Click on the subscription to change your notification settings to all notifications. And just like that, you're up to date. Okay. Yeah. 
show up when you call on his name song simply says we love to call your name because there's something that has to change when we call on the name of Jesus how many know there's power in the name of Jesus come on clap your hands right there if you know there's power in the name of Jesus
Come on, if you believe there's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. As we prepare to intercede, you ought to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, power. Can the whole building lift it up? See, there is power. power in the name of Jesus. So much power. power in the name. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. Power in the name. There is healing in the name. There is healing in the name of Jesus. If you know there's healing, see. Healing in the name. Somebody lift it up. Everything must change at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are oh, Lord over my life. Lord over my life. You Lord over my life. Over my situation, Lord, you are. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. And you're unstoppable, God. I'm so glad that you are. I can call on you. You're dependable, God. I can call on you. And everything, everything change. I can call on you. Oh, I can call on you. You're dependable. Come on, anybody know him to be a faithful God? He's dependable. Never fail to show up on my behalf. You're dependable, God, you are, yeah. You're dependable. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Oh, oh, oh. You're dependable. You never change, you never change. You're dependable.
somebody knows where I'm going with this. This song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Has he done anything on your behalf to where you can say that I'm not turning back, I'm not going back, I'm going to continue to follow you as you lead me, as you guide me, God, I'm going to follow Hallelujah. Anybody glad to have decided to follow Jesus? Thank you so much. It is a joy and a privilege. Let's look to the Lord in prayer, shall we? All over the room, would you pray with me? Great and most heavenly Father, God, we realize and recognize that there is no other name under heaven by which humanity finds salvation. Today we have gathered to lift up one name and one name alone, not our mama's name, not our daddy's name, not the name of the preacher, the denomination. We came this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. So all over this room, spirit of the living God, here we are found giving you the praise because we followed you this far through many dangers, toils, and snares the Lord has brought us and we call your name Ebenezer for hitherto you have carried us. You are Emmanuel, the God who is with us. You are the Rose of Sharon that even in the valley of the shadow of death, you've still been beautiful, you've still been providing and God today, we've gathered here to say that great is the name of our God. Great is the name of our God. Hallelujah to that name. That name that is greater than the grave. That name that is greater than sickness. That name that is greater than poverty. That name that is greater than any other name. So today, we won't let our sorrows, we won't let our troubles, we won't let our problems rob us of the opportunity, of the chance to stand in your sanctuary and make the devil mad by lifting up the name of Jesus. We won't let rocks cry out in our place, for the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Matchless and miraculous Savior, we've learned to call on your name. So today we thank you for being the God who doesn't just listen to our prayers 
Because God, if all you did was listen, we might have to accuse you of gossip. But I'm so glad on a Sunday morning to be able to stand before the saints and declare that you're not just a prayer listening God, but you're a prayer answering God. For Father, we called on your name when different ones went into the hospital this week. And God, you didn't just hear us, but you heard us and you answered. And we're here today to celebrate all of the saints that went in to get the procedure and now are out to declare that the Lord is a healer, the Lord is a redeemer, the Lord hears and the answer. We thank you, Lord, for keeping, for covering, and for protecting your people through dangers seen and unseen. Through trials and tribulations, you have kept us. So, God, we're going to keep on trusting you. Even in this room, let faith rise even now that those of us who are still waiting on breakthrough, those of us who are still hurting and grieving, those of us who are still waiting for a change to come, let us be encouraged to know that you're not just the God who stands afar off, but you're a God who comes near and answers our prayer. We thank you and we praise you. Now all over the room, will you join me in thanking our great and glorious and matchless and awesome and powerful and omnipotent and awesome and magnanimous, our God who rules over all. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us when we pray and answering us every time. In Jesus' name, let the people of God shout amen together. Come on, shout amen together. Hallelujah. Would you do me a favor? I know, I know not everybody feels their help. You know, you got to stand and feel your help sometimes, and those knees just don't want to cooperate. I know. But if you would, please, if you're able, would you stand on your feet and greet somebody in the room? Shake a hand, uh, give a wave, let somebody know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. today. Good to see the people of God in the house of God, sharing the love of God. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Real quick, <clears throat> excuse me, real quick, I want to uh, get on with our service, but I'm so grateful uh, for our covenant partner and brother, Mr. Jean-Claude is in the house today. Come on, let's make some noise for this man of God. We love you, brother. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, There, you all know, there are not many people you can call when you need help who will rise to the occasion. 
but this man, from the day that I met him, has been rising to the occasion to stand with this church and the mission of this pastor. And I thank God for you, sir. We thank God for your restaurant. Now listen, listen, an applause is great, but he's a practical man like I'm a practical man. And so what I need you to do, clap for him, praise the Lord, but I need you to go to his restaurant, to the Yours Cafe across the street. What time are you open today, sir? You, you, they're already open and preparing food. So all you have to do is cross the street. Now, this here is Washington Heights slash Roseland, so I would advise you cross the street in your vehicle. In the name of Jesus, don't you go trying stuff. But it is a fabulous establishment. I've brought my family there many times. And when I walk through the door, I go so much, when I walk through the door, the, the team knows you want some stew chicken, Pastor. You want some stew and plantain. We got you, Pastor. Because they know the food is absolutely amazing and the establishment is top notch. There are few like it in the city of Chicago. Dare I say, there is nothing like Lior's Cafe in the city of Chicago. So you have to, you have to, you owe it to yourself to set aside some dollars uh, and what, trust me, you will get more than what you paid for because they believe in portion size. Glory yes, to sir. God. I've got after church plans right through here, but we love you and we thank God for you and all the ways that you're partnering with us. Thank God for our men. Can we celebrate the men of covenant faith? Thank God for these mighty men in Zion, Brother Jeff Smith and uh, Kevin Dantzler and others, so many like them, uh, that stand and make sure that there is uh, a representation of men of standard. And you will see those announcements in your bulletin. Uh, I just want to shout them out and let them know we love them uh, and continue to participate. Love ministry, uh, to participate in that. I believe that will be next Sunday, love ministry. And so be prepared for that after the service. Uh, we are going to go right into our time of giving. And so if you're able uh, to get your gift, whatever you've decided in your heart, you were going to give unto the Lord. Uh, get that ready uh, because we're getting ready to give. Maybe it's your first time here, first time in a long time, and so much is new, so much has changed, so much is different. I want to invite you uh, to participate in what we call the mission of our church. The mission of our church is simple. It's one sentence so that you can remember it. It's to help people believe that the best is yet to come. Why such a simple statement, Pastor? Well, first of all, you won't remember anything else. I never understood those, those mission statements that are four and five paragraphs long. Don't nobody know what that means? <laughs> you should be in the grocery store, on the, uh, in the Uber ride. You should be uh, on your way downtown and somebody stop you and ask you, what is your church about? I, I had a meeting with our sound man. We were talking about the future of the church. And uh, right there on, on the lunch line, right there, our server asked me, I was wearing a Covenant Faith sweatshirt, asked me, what's your church? And what's it about? And what's this? And what's that? And I was able to give an answer that fit in the time. I can't say, well, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew at 5. You ain't got time for all that. Helping people believe the best is yet to come. That makes sense. And you know what that boils down to? hope. We are here to help people find or refine hope. To find that there was a God who loves them, but you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. That's okay. There's still hope for you. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. That's okay. There's hope for you. Our whole aim, no tricks up our sleeves, no, no bait and switch. We are here to help people believe that God has more in store, and an amen goes right there. So when you give to this church, that's what you're helping us to do. When uh, we have our uh, business meeting, which I promise is coming, I promise we're, we're trying to get the details right so that when we stand before you, there is no confusion. Um, and so thank you for bearing with us. But when you get those details, we want you to be able to see, okay, we are helping people find hope. We're helping people connect with purpose. 
And so that's really important. When you give, whether it's online, you can go to CF Chicago, C is in covenant, F is in faith, chicago.org, cfchicago.org, and you can give online on your device that way. Uh, you can also give via envelope. You came with something to put in the bucket when it comes by your road. Just slip your hand up. One of these faithful ushers will come to where you are and put an envelope in your hands so that you can give. Why do we need to give via envelopes? Because people give for diverse reasons. Some people participate in a tradition in the church that we call the tithe. That tradition is not mandatory to get to heaven. No one's going to zap you, strike you dead. But some of us understand that you can't beat God giving. And so we've set aside 10% of all of our increase to give unto the Lord and to uh, partner with the work of ministry here on the south side where we believe God resides. And so if you want to tithe, you give via envelope. But some of you came in the room today and you came, you want to you wanna give God above the tithe or you want to give God outside of the tithe. You got your tithe, but then you got something else on the side. Uh, that's an offering. We call it an offering in the church. That's some church 101 lingo for you. We got tithes, 10% offering. Uh, that's something outside of that 10%. Some of you are partnering with specific projects that are going on in our church, which are many. Our children got projects. We've got community projects. We've got building upgrades. There's all kinds of stuff that you can partner with. And so if you decided that you want to give that way, that envelope helps you to do that. Amen? Amen. Anybody need an envelope? Everybody good? Okay, I've got one hand in the back there. God bless you. All right, we're going to pray that these ushers are going to come. And then the team is going to come, and then I'm going to preach. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you that little becomes much in the hands of the master. So now, God, we ask that you would take these seeds, multiply them, and cause them to bring a rate of return much greater than they could in our hands alone. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. With the people of God, say amen. Good morning, Covenant Faith. Here are your weekly announcements. Greetings to our Covenant Faith visitors and guests. We are deeply honored to have you join us for our morning worship experience. After the service, be sure to fill out a connect card so that we can stay connected with you. Welcome to Covenant Faith. Our CF Men's Ministry annual golf outing is back. You heard that right, June 17th. The men's ministry will be hosting their golf outing at the Glen Woody Golf Course in Glenwood, Illinois. Registration opens today. Please see one of the members from the men's ministry to sign up. Love Ministry at the Cove. We will be honoring Sean and Melanie Brooks for the month of April. Be sure to sign the card immediately following morning service on April 21st. God's got you covered, and so does Covenant Faith. Join us today immediately following morning service in the atrium if you are a family in need of a little diaper support. Back by popular demand, our CF Men's Ministry Wellness Day on May 4th. This event is packed with hot topics that you want to hear about. The event starts at 9 a.m. and you will receive a complimentary continental breakfast. Please scan the QR code to register. A very huge monumental congratulations to our very own Ava Talbert and her History Fair team for winning the school and citywide History Fair competition for their performance of When Women Went to Work. Let's continue to keep the entire team lifted in prayers as they advance to the National History Fair. Congratulations, Ava. Your Covenant Faith family is so very proud of you. It's time for our April birthdays. A very happy birthday to Sister Valerie. We are wishing you a joyful birthday filled with love. May your day be fantastic. Happy 11th birthday to our talented violinist, Miss Aaliyah Cherry. May this special day be full of laughter, new experiences, confidence, and growth. You are cherished by all of us. We love you, Aaliyah. Happy birthday. 
These are your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week and remember that the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Come on, anybody love the Lord this morning, this afternoon? It's afternoon now, it's 12.08. Praise Him. I don't care what time it is, I love Him. Amen. Song says, I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration up to you. You reign, you reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God and God alone. There is only one God. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you. I can sing to you. Just wave your hands if you love them more than anything. Come on, sing. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Come on, I can sing to you. Quick, the song says, Love me in your arms. Love me in your arms. You are my shelter from the storm. When all, when when all, all my friends were gone, you were right. You were right there all along. I never, I never known a love like this before. I worship and adore. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, if you love him, I want you to sing this song with us and sing it from your heart. It says, I love Jesus. I worship and adore. I just want to tell you, come on, Lord, I love you, oh, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I worship and adore.
but more than anything, help us sing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and adore you. Just want, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, I need you to think about some things. Think about some things he's done for you. Just tell him I love you. Say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. more than anything. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. more than anything. Oh, oh, oh. One more time. Lift your voice in the room. Sing, Lord, I love you. Pour out your love on Jesus. Pour out your love on him. He's such a good God and he deserves our praise. He deserves our worship just for being who he is. God, I love you, Lord. Love you more than anything. Nobody else can do what you do for me, God. Nothing can take your place, God. I love you more than anything because I can't count on anybody else. I can't count on anything else. There's nobody greater than you. I've searched high and low. I couldn't find nobody, nobody greater than you. Oh, yeah. That's why I love you more than anything because you can do it all and you do it all for me. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. We honor and we adore you. We just came to let you know that we're grateful we're thankful and we're glad to be in your presence in the name of Jesus. Now, God, as we prepare, we've sung, we've sown, and now we ask that you would speak. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Can we celebrate the Lord? Can we thank God for this amazing worship team and all of their service and sacrifice unto the Lord? Amen. I thank God for these faithful servants.
and all that they do. Amen. I've asked our media team today uh, to help me begin this uh, sermon, this preaching moment, in an uncommon way, in an uncommon way. And so I've asked them uh, to help me. I want to open with a fun little video clip uh, that uh, Shots. depicts How a was moment this in a collection that was of effort tonight to achieve perfection? It has been enhanced, enhanced with some elements uh, that are familiar to the black church tradition. And so I want you to listen to this message uh, as it gets ready to play on the screen. I believe it will contextualize for us uh, our sermonic moment. Are we ready? Amen. I got to give, I got to give honor to the most high God for allowing us to be back at the same place in which we had sad tears. And I just want you to know that the God I serve, the God I serve, when he closes a door, he opens up a door that is, that's given you unimaginable success. This is uncommon favor. No, Saints, when I saw uh, Coach Bishop Don Staley on the world stage, take a moment, didn't care about nobody's cameras, didn't care about Disney's feelings. Y'all know Disney got mad at her for saying God on live TV. She didn't care nothing about that. She stood right there flat footed and said, I've got to stop and give God the praise because this that I'm standing in is uncommon favor. Well, saints, the, the sermon about wrote itself right there on my couch watching a basketball game because God can use anything to speak. And so today I want to speak from the subject uncommon favor, uncommon favor. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter six, Daniel chapter six. And uh, I believe the Lord has a message for us uh, today, and I'm excited to share it with you. Daniel chapter 6. While you're turning there, uh, you should know that uh, the Bible study questions are online on our church website, cfchicago.org. Uh, Bible study questions are online, so you need to get online and view those questions. If you are having trouble uh, utilizing the internet, devices are scary to you. I understand we have paper copies in the hallway uh, for you because we love you. There's no judgment in God. Amen. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 17. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 17. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. The text reads this way. A stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles, so that nothing would be changed in regard to Daniel. Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no entertainment was brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king arose at dawn and the break of, at the break of day and went in haste to the lion's den. And when he had came near to the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lion's? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths, and they have not harmed me, 
in as much as I was found innocent before him and also toward you, O king, I have committed no crime. And the theme for today is uncommon favor. Now, Lord, would you take my mouth and speak through it, my mind and think with it, that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my mind and heart, each and all might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my very great redeemer. And the people of God shouted together, amen. And amen. On your way to your seat, would you just shout at somebody, uncommon favor. Amen. In her commencement address, Professor Dr. Ruha Benjamin, speaking before the 143rd uh, Founders Day at Spelman College, boldly declared that black faces in high places won't save us. I'm going to say it one more time for the people on the front row. You know, they always come for the back, but the back is where all the saints are. I can see the front row is where us heathens are. Black faces in high places won't save us. L let me, Reverend Carrie Ann, let me help black folk learn when to shout. Black faces in high places won't save us because our faith is not in high places. Our faith supersedes high places. Let, let, Tremiah, let, let me bring some Bible to it because the saints still ain't picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, because I believe your Bible says, uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. I wish I had some Bible readers right through here. In God for the pulling down of strongholds. Another word for strongholds is a high place. Uh, I've heard it said this way, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, and against high places. Here it is. Uh, the reason that respectability politics will never fix the neighborhood is because God is not concerned with places or positions of human power so much as God is concerned with the hearts of humankind being turned back to him. I wish I had about four saints right through here that could put a Aside their title and put down their resume and lift up the blood-stained banner and right through here say I've been fighting on the Lord's side and I'm not tired I'm not tired yet I, I wish I had just about five saints who could say I'm in the Lord's army y'all remember the old Sunday school song I'm in the Lord's army I'm on the battlefield and I'm fighting I'm fighting fighting for the Lord. See, the, the problem with our world today, one of, I should say, let me not be prideful, one of, I don't have all the answers, one of the problems with our world today is we have bought into the lie from the pit of hell that if we can just climb a little higher, we'll be all right. But didn't you learn a lesson from the Jeffersons that if you move on up to the east side and get that deluxe apartment in the sky, even the prophet Biggie before he died said, more money, more problems. I wish I had just about five folks right through here who had sense enough to say that I've made more money than I've made before and still came up short. I've, I've gotten promotions. I've gotten bigger titles, but can nothing move in my life like the power of God. I want you to get a doctorate, an earned one. I want you uh, to finish school all the way. I want you to get a promotion that you deserve. I, I want you to make more money and get a budget. I want you to find that beautiful spouse, that wonderful spouse. But beloved, before you get what you ask for, I'm going to need you to get what God wants for you to get on the inside of you. 
want you to realize that the God that you serve is not so interested in giving you everything you want as everything you need. And what so many Christians don't know is that there already is favor on their life. It's just not common favor. A lot of people don't realize that God is working when everybody else can't see to bring about results that everybody else can't produce. You thought that the devil was fighting you when you got into trouble, but trouble drove you to your knees. You ought to thank God for trouble because he's a present help in the time. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. He's a present help in the time of trouble. Let me talk to a few saints who have been saved for a few decades because y'all know that, that trouble don't last always, but neither do the good times. And if you put your faith in just the good times, you will find yourself disappointed. But if you've got sense enough to say it's God who I'm living for and God who I will die for. And I'm not about to let a, a temporal moment, a, a temporary season cause me to lose my focus. Instead, I'll put my hand into God's unchanging hand. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, I, I may not know what tomorrow holds, Sarah, but I know the God who holds tomorrow. I, I've only been on this earth for 32 years, but uh, the old saint, Sister Evans, would say, I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. I'm, I'm just going to keep trusting. I'm just going to keep believing. I'm just going to keep walking by faith. Believing that the God who began the work is the same God who's able to complete it. Did you know that the favor that's on your life is uncommon? Did you know that the favor that is on your life is a grace that will enable you to do what is otherwise impossible? Did you know that the favor that's on your life is not just the kind of favor that shows up at the car dealership or at uh, the bank where you get bank error in your favor? You can play Monopoly and get those odds. The, the favor that's on your life is the kind of favor that what everybody else calls calamity, you don't call calamity. The favor that's on your life is peace that surpasses understanding. The favor that's on on your life is that when death, hell, and the grave rear its ugly head, you are able to say, yeah, but my God, hallelujah, shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. So I'm not worried about what life will bring. I'm firmly saved and secure in the master's arms. The favor that's on your life is not common. And you ought not allow life to push you around. You ought not let the devil make you feel a certain type of way just because you didn't get your way. You have to remind yourself that you didn't put you here and so you're not in charge of keeping you here. That the same God who put breath in your body is the same God who's able to put breakthrough in your life. The same God who wills it is the same God who will foot the bill for it. The same God who caused the sun to rise is the same God who will cause his face to shine upon you. The favor that's on your life is uncommon. And so that brings us to our text today because... Uh, the central figure in our text is a man by the name of Daniel. You all know Daniel. Daniel uh, is famous for coming from uh, the land of Israel, brought unwillingly and without his own volition to a land that was not his own, to serve a people that were not his people because somebody else thought colonialism and imperialism was the only way that they could operate. I wish I had time to break it all the way down the way that I feel it. But just know this, the Bible does deal with issues of oppression. 
So we cannot afford to have a faith that shies away from systemic injustices because they are present right here in the text. The God that we serve doesn't shy away from the imbalances that we see in our world today because they are not new. And so it's incumbent upon the people of God to be able to pick up our Bibles and to search the scriptures and to find direction for how to behave in a world that is stacked up against you. And can I just parenthetically pause for the cause and encourage you not to play the respectability politics game that you can't wear enough suits, you can't change the texture of your hair, you can't contour your wide nose enough to make other people accept you, your hair is kinky and coily, your skin is dark and beautiful, the way that you are is the way God intended, and if other people don't like it, there's no amount of nipping and tucking that you'll be able to do to fit into their box because the God that created you made you for uncommon purpose. So then, here is Daniel, a foreigner in a land that's not his own. And he has risen to the highest ranks of government. And while he is there, trouble comes to find him. Our text goes on to teach us uh, that all Daniel did was have a prayer life. Can I tell you that the areas of your life where you see the greatest attack is an indication that that's where you are most dangerous to the devil? Can I let you know that if you're struggling with sobriety, that means that God, that God placed in you such a wonderful gift and such an awesome personality and thought pattern that the devil will do anything to alter the chemical makeup of your brain? Can I let you know that if you struggle with being in relationship after relationship and you can't hardly seem to just sit alone with yourself, it's because the devil knows that if you ever get a hold of your vessel and understand the value that's in your body, that you'll be able to impact generations for generations to come. Can I let you know that if you struggle with self-esteem, it's because the devil knows that if you ever look in the mirror and realize that you are indeed a man or a woman of God that you'll turn this world upside down can I let you know that if you struggle with being honest it's because the devil knows that a lie in your mouth is better than you telling the truth to power because if you begin to tell the truth then all of a sudden stuff's going to start changing and we can't have that can I let you know that the place that you struggle the most is not a place for you to be ashamed but a place for you to go get some help because once you turn that thing around you will begin to see the purpose of God align in your life see the God that we serve he's not common because the common response to struggle is what judgment you know how we do if someone's struggling financially we Ooh, what happened to them? If somebody struggles in a relationship, mm-hmm, I knew something was off. If somebody's struggling with their physical ailments, see, doing all of that, fill in the blank. We have a lot to say about people, but we very rarely take the time to talk to people. And the God that we serve is more interested in bestowing his uncommon favor upon the lives of all people. That's why he said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We're so busy trying to figure out who we can keep the spirit of God from when God is trying to figure out how he can get it to folk. He don't think like we think. He don't move like everybody else's God moves. He doesn't do what you would expect him to do. He does the uncommon. 
and here is Daniel. I told you he's a foreigner. I told you he's risen to the highest levels of government. Effectively, he is the number three ruler in the land of Babylon. And there in Babylon, he has a great degree of authority. And you should know that with great responsibility comes great trial. That the more you are in charge of, the more things will charge at you. Don't believe me? Try to lead something. You will find that everybody who was your friend when you were an associate all of a sudden has an issue with you when you become a manager. You will find that people who were uh, willing to gossip with you in the break room, all of a sudden when you get a corner office, now they want to eye roll and talk about everything you're not qualified to actually receive. Uh, everybody who was single on a Saturday right with you, once you get married now, they can't stand you and sick of you posting about your relationship all the time. It's funny how folk feel as soon as God elevates you. I hear you, baby. I hear you. It's all right, book. All the kids do it. Mine are first. Y'all saw I almost busted myself last week trying to catch Noah. <laughs> and the sad thing is the saints were going to put me on World Star <laughs> instead of running up here to help me. <laughs> uh, folk had their phones ready. There he go. <laughs> Let's see how this is going to end. <laughs> One of my teenagers had the nerve to zoom in. Do you understand how much you don't like your pastor to zoom in? Bro, here is Daniel at the top of his game, and trouble comes to find him. It ought to encourage you that if you find yourself uh, going through trial or tribulation, you didn't necessarily do something wrong or something deserving to have to go through trial or trouble. Yeah, there's, there, is this, there is this pervasive theology, and I got, to, I got to move on, but I got to say this to you. There is this pervasive theology that when things go awry in your life, uh, people begin to tell you all the things you've done wrong. If you find that there is a struggle in your household, people start blaming you for not serving the Lord enough. Well, you know she's not a tither. Well, you know he don't come to Bible study. Well, you know, well, you know, well, you know. And they know so much but the truth. And the truth is that Jesus said in this life, you will have trouble. Brother, oh, I thought a few folks would have said amen with us, but it's just you and me in the room. That, that trouble will find you in the highest of heights and at the lowest of lows. Trouble ain't racist, sexist, classist. Trouble don't have no issues with the isms. Trouble is an equal opportunity employer. They might have repealed... Uh, affirmative action in the Supreme Court, but trouble didn't pay no mind because it will advance trouble right down your boulevard right quick and in a hurry. Here is Daniel faced with trouble. And while he's facing this trouble, the Bible says that he goes on to pray. You got to read Daniel chapter 6, the whole chapter to get the story. But he, he goes and he prays. And when he prays, watch this, he gets in deeper trouble. Let me just help some of you in your theology that believe that uh, you can pray one time, God will pick it up, dust it off, turn it around, and you will never have any issues for the rest of life. Uh, can the saints who have been saved for a little while just come for me with an amen that you're going to go through some stuff and then you'll go through some more stuff? I wish I had just about five saints right through here who could just bear witness to the fact that you can do everything right and everything can still go wrong. And that if you don't have enough character and enough 
steel in your spine to stand up and still give God the glory when everybody's hating on you, when everything's going wrong for you, when things aren't lining up the way that you had initially drawn them out. If you can't stand there and still open up your mouth to say, you know what? God was good in the sunshine, but he's also good on the rainy days. God is good in the good times, but he's also good in the sad times. If you don't have sense enough to acknowledge that he at least gave you breath in your body, he at least put strength in your bones, he at least caused you to see a brand new day, then your faith is in the wrong thing. Daniel did everything right, and still everything went wrong. There are three things that I want to call your attention to before I close that are in this text. Three, three symbols, three themes that I want to call your attention to, uh, and then we're going to go home. Three things that I, I need you to see about the uncommon favor that God put on Daniel's life because while he was elevated to the highest offices and while he was promoted, there were homegrown folk that didn't like that he passed them up. Homies who uh, had been there longer than him, folk who had felt like it was their turn and saw their turn pass them by. And here is Daniel going at a rate that is uncommon. It's not normal to come to somebody else's country and be in charge of it. It's not normal uh, to be picked up from your home and thrust into another place and taught a new language and forced to accept new customs and still be able to thrive. But the way the favor of God works is we don't set thriving as the goal. We set faithfulness as the goal. That when God says, do this, we say, yes, sir. When God says, go this way, we say, yes. That the goal of our faith is not to achieve, it's to believe. Here are the three things that I want you to see that are in the text. The first is the first uh, two words of verse 17. Verse 17 uh, opens up in the New American Standard Bible. It says, a stone. In other versions, it says, the stone. I want you to consider the stone. Second thing uh, that I want you to see, uh, it shows up in verse 20. In verse 20, uh, the text tells us uh, that uh, when he had come near to the den, speaking of King Darius, when he had come uh, to the den, he, he cried out with a troubled voice. I want you to consider the cry. The third thing uh, that I want you to see that's in this text, uh, I want you to see it shows up in verses 21 and 22 uh, where Daniel speaks to the king and he gives his testimony. I want you to watch the witness. The three things that I want you to see, I want you uh, to, to see the stone. I want you to consider the cry and I want you to watch the witness. Y'all ready? Real quick. I'm going to break these down, and then we're going to go home. Okay, the first is uh, the stone, the stone, the stone that was put over the mouth of the den of lions. There's something about the relationship between the Hebrew Bible and the epithet or the symbolism or the theme of stones. Stones show up all throughout the Hebrew Bible, the, uh, the original testament of scripture that first lived in Jewish tradition and circles. First it began as an oral tradition, eventually later it was written down about the time of Daniel during the exile of Israel in to Babylon and something that kept on showing up in the stories that the Israelites shared with each other were stories about stones. Stories about stones. If you go back to the book of Genesis, you'll find that there's a story about a stone where uh, a young man by the na name of Jacob, he uh, becomes the grandson of Sarah, the son of Rebekah. He is uh, the son who, who usurps his brother Esau. 
and, and he, he takes his brother's birthright uh, for a bowl of soup, and, and when his brother figures it out, he gets upset, and long begins this, uh, and there begins this long battle between the brothers that results, comes to a head, an intersection where Esau is on one side of the river, and Isaac, uh, excuse me, and Jacob is on the other side of the river, and Jacob has a dream. And he has this dream laying on a stone. I, I wish, I wish y'all read the Bible uh, with some honesty because you know as well as I do that can't nobody get no sleep laying their head on a stone for a pillow. And an amen goes right there. Don't you look in your sanctified, judgmental voice. I know the truth will set you free. Don't nobody go to sleep. I know some of you like a harder mattress to sleep on. I get that. Some of us grew up making pallets on the floor so we could sleep in the same room as our cousins. I understand all that. I, I get it. But, but don't nobody go outside and say, hmm, Tempur-Pedic stone. Tempur-Pedic stone. I'll take the stone. You got to be in a bad place. I, I still, Jean-Claude, my dad told me that uh, back when he was in Ghana, sometimes he had to sleep on stone. And I was like, man, and you had to walk to school uphill both ways uh, in, in the snow with one boot on and hop the whole way. I don't believe that. Uh, just sometimes when you think about how, how stressed out you got to be to lay your head on a stone and sleep. The, the next time you feel stressed out, just remind yourself, at least I'm not sleeping on rocks. It could be worse. Jacob is asleep on a stone, and there on that stone, the uh, Bible says that the, the heavens opened and angels uh, descended and ascended. And, and at that place, he felt like he met God. And when he, when he came out of that moment, he left that place, and do you know what he did? I'm so glad you asked me. Uh, he, he went and he took some stones and he built an altar. And he took uh, that altar and he named that place Bethel. Bethel in Hebrew, when translated to English, means house of God. Here is something about the stones, the, the, the stones that show up in our life. Let that represent the stress. Because stones can be stressful. You know, they used to say on the playground, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But that was a lie from the pit of hell. Whoever came up with that didn't go to school with black kids. Because let black children find something wrong with you, it's a wrap, Jack. You ever played the dozens with your cousins? You in there fighting for your life. Well, 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 no, 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 hold on, hold on, well, well. Played your mama jokes games and then it gets serious. At first it was cute, but then they said something that kind of hit. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but the words can hurt too. The stones that we face in this life, they can be harmful. All kinds of stressors, all kinds. Have, have you ever been, for, for the sisters in the room, have you, ever, have you ever had to raise children? <laughs> Toddlers will make you say, come now, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Maranatha, Maranatha. Anytime you want to crack the sky, you could just take me. You could leave them here for a little bit. Just take me. To all the brothers in the room, have you ever, have you ever gotten home from work and just sat in the driveway? Huh? And then, and then when you get a call from a certain somebody, don't say nothing because she might be in the room. And then you get a call from certain somebody and then you say, oh, my, my phone was off. I ain't even see your call.
Life can be stressful. Life can be stressful. But, but something that blesses me is that the same thing that, that Jacob had to lay his stressed out head on became the very thing that he arranged in such a way that it could give God the glory. I, I want to just tell you, rocks are rocks. Ain't nothing special about no rocks. But when you stack those stones in such a way to say, this is going to become a platform upon which the story of God can demonstrate the glory of God, uh, it all of a sudden gives you a new strength and a new power. Here it is. Uh, when Coach Dawn Staley uh, took that basketball court with her team last year, they were the underdogs. And they lost. And everybody criticized and told them what they were not. And that could have become a stressor, but instead it became a motivator. And this season, Coach Dawn Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks not only went undefeated, not only uh, defeated every adversary that they came against in basketball, but then on the largest stage, the coach was able to lead her team to say, had it not been for the Lord who was on our our side. I wish I had just about three saints who could give God some uncommon praise for the fact that when the, your back was against the wall and it seemed like it was all over, God made a way that when it was dark and it seemed like nothing was going to shine, God was able to say that even in the midnight hour, joy is still able to show up after the suffering. That while you feel like you're down to nothing, God is still up to something that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask, think, or imagine. He is the God of uncommon favor. So the next time you face some stress, stack the stones. You stack them stories up, okay, the bills are high and the money is low. Stack that stone, okay? The, 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 the report from the doctor's office, it ain't good, doc, that's all right. Stack that stone because when I get through stacking these stones, my Jesus, an altar of the Lord is about to show up and can't nobody do me like Jesus. So I'd much rather arrange these stressors so that that God can get the glory in my story. You got to stack the stones, but then you need to consider the cry. You got to consider the cry. The text tells us uh, that king, the king, he was, he was stressed out. He was stressed out and he got uh, to the tomb uh, where Daniel was or the, to what should have been his tomb. He got to the lion's den and he cried out, uh, uh, Daniel, servant of the living God. You got to know that somebody is in dire straits when they don't even believe like you believe and start calling on the God that you call on. Let me tell you, your witness ought to be so intact that when people interact with you, they may not have the faith you have but they understand the faith that you have and although they don't know how to put a thank you and a Jesus together they've seen that your life reflects what happens when a saint of the most high God puts their faith in Christ Jesus and so servant of the living God can you help me get a prayer through a uh, brother sister uh, who goes to church can you pray for me uh, mother uh, uh, father in Zion can you counsel me through this the world cries out all the time people are always crying out 
and they cry out in different ways. Some of you have grandsons or granddaughters that are crying out through their behavior. They're not behaving in the way that people in your family background typically behave. And so you're looking at them sideways like, who raised you and where did we go wrong? And let me just encourage you that it's not about who went wrong or what went wrong. It's about what God is getting ready to do now that things have gone wrong. He's about to shake them and shift them and turn them right. You need to consider the cry. You got a grandchild that just won't get right. That's an opportunity for God to step in. You got a spouse that won't act right. That's an opportunity for God to step in. You got coworkers, bosses, people in your life that won't treat you right. That's an opportunity for you to say, you know what? I could seek revenge for myself, but the last I checked, the battle is the Lord's. And so let God fight for me because greater is he that's on the inside of me than this devil that's in the world. I'm not going to fight you because baby, I can't argue with you you mad and I'm not gonna let you make me mad you got to consider the cry this was an opportunity for Daniel to show the king I'm not mad at you I'm excited about what God is doing through you because had you not been a dummy and thrown me in here we wouldn't have had an opportunity to see what God could really really do but now that you've played your role, Judas, now God is getting ready to show up and show out. So I'm not mad at the fact that you're acting how you're acting. I'm excited about the opportunity that God is getting ready to show out through. And an amen goes right there. Last point, and then we're through. Uh, you got to watch the witness. You got to watch the witness in verses 21 and 22. Uh, Daniel says to the king, he says, uh, uh, not only was I not harmed, but I was not harmed in as much as I was found innocent. Here's the beautiful thing about that. You and I both know Daniel wasn't perfect. Don't you look at me like that because you ain't either. You got issues. You got problems. You have stuff that you're not proud of. And this text is a beautiful foreshadowing testament of the understanding, whether intended or not, let me take some homiletical license and superimpose, eisegetically impose a concept that did not originate with the author. I'm bringing this to the text. This wasn't already there. But we have the benefit of 2020 hindsight. And looking from where I'm looking, I'm saying that maybe, just maybe, Daniel understood that when God looks at us, he doesn't just see our wins and losses. But when he looks at us, he sees that we're covered by the blood. I wish I had a witness in the room today. When he sees me, he doesn't see all the times that I've messed up. He seems all the times that God uh, covered me and protected me. And because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, I'm no longer defined by what I get right and I'm not defined by what I get wrong. My testimony is that Late on a Friday, he went up a hill called Calvary. And they hung him high and they stretched him wide. And there on that cross, he died till death died. He, he died all day Friday, died all day Saturday, but early one good Sunday morning. Y'all ain't saying amen like you've been blood washed like I've been blood washed. Because if he would have died there and the story ended there, then Tony, we have no reason to celebrate. The apostle Paul says we're wasting our time. Oh, but thanks be to God that the story don't stop at the fact that he died. But early one Sunday morning, he got up, up out of that grave and resurrected and was able to say that death and hell and the grave no longer have have the power you have to watch what people bear witness to because folk will talk a good game but I'm more interested in how you walk 
out your game. I'm more interested not in what you say you're going to do. I'm more interested in what you actually put your hands to do. Daniel said, uh, I have been found innocent after the fact. Isn't that interesting that he didn't plead his case when he was being uh, threatened with a death sentence? It's not common to present your defense after you have served the sentence. Typically, for those of you who are Law & Order fans in the room, the defense presents its case during the trial, not after they've served the punishment. But here is Daniel saying, I had so much confidence in God that I believe that even if I was punished unjustly, he would prove my innocence. I don't have to fight that fight. The uncommon way that Christians move is that we don't fight to prove we allow God to move. We're not in the business of trying to get everybody to like us. We're in the business of being faithful to the God who leads us. And in our text, there are three things that you should have seen. One, to stack the stones. You're going to find stress, but let that stress become a platform for God to showcase his goodness to the world. Secondly, consider the cry. Uh, Daniel could have been offended that the king now decided to, oh, now you want to cry. Now you want to call me a servant of the Most High God. Now you want to find out if I'm doing all right. Where were you when they were arresting me for nothing that I had done wrong? Where were you when I was being falsely accused? Where were you when they threw me into the den full of hungry lions? But he didn't do that. He considered that the king, his heart maybe was open to the good news of God's love for him. And so Daniel said, oh, king, may you live forever. Let me tell you what my God did for me. You got to stack the stones. You got to consider the cry. But then finally, you got to watch the witness. Uh, uh, Daniel essentially said, uh, uh, I can show you that I'm innocent because God just did a miracle to prove it. I'm not showing you I'm innocent by reading off my resume. I'm not showing you I'm innocent by telling you all the dirt and grime and stuff that everybody else is doing. No, I'm, I'm just going to let God be my defense. And today in this room, there were some of you, you're going through some stress in your life and you need to stack some stones. You need to arrange the affairs of your life so that God can get the glory in your story. Some of you are in this room today and you're, you're facing all kinds of weird actions and behaviors from the people around you and it doesn't make any sense. Why would you throw me into a den of lions when I've done nothing wrong? And I believe the word of the Lord to you is to consider the cry. Maybe, maybe the people around you are really just agents or really just opportunities for you to pursue God deeper and to see God do what only he can do. And then finally, the third point is to watch the witness. You ought to live your life in such a way that other people can see what you say, not just hear what you say. You need to live your life in such a way that your grandchildren, your children, your co-workers, your neighbors, the people that God brings into your life can see the hand of God at work, not just hear about it. Because the God that we serve, he's got favor on you, even if it's not common. Bow your heads, let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your word today. I thank you for speaking to us and ministering to us. I thank you, Lord God, that you are moving in our midst. Uh, maybe you came today and you want to start a relationship with Jesus. 
you want to ask the Lord uh, to lead your life, you've never done that before, you've never actually surrendered your right to lead and make decisions for your own life, you, you want to let God be in the driver's seat. You want to let God tell you where you should go and what you should do and how to lead your life. You want a relationship with the God of the universe. Maybe that's you in the room today. Just slip that hand up. I want to pray for you. Maybe you're in the room today and, and you want to get baptized. You know about God. You've been following. You love him. But you've never made a public declaration that you are living for God now. The past is the past. But everything in front of you, it's unto God. It's for God. It's because of God. And you don't want there to be any confusion about who's leading your life now. You want to be baptized in water, and you want to make that next step of following God in your life. If that's you, just slip that hand up. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. Maybe you're in the room today and you're saying, you know what? I want to make this place my church home. I've been coming off and on and, you know, I've, I've heard the sermons and it's good and it's cool and all, but I, I really want to call this my church home. You want to join Covenant Faith as a member, just slip that hand up. I want to pray for you too. Hallelujah. Well, this is what I want you to do. If you lifted up your hand and I saw one hand that went up, I'm about to pray and then I want to invite uh, Reverend Carrie Ann up to come and pray our benediction for us. Uh, but after I pray and after the service, I want you to come and meet me out in the hallway. I'll be out in the hallway. I want you to come find me out in the hallway and I want you uh, to, to remind me, hey, I lifted up my hand. I want to be baptized. And I want to pray with you, and I want to get you connected so you can take that next step in your discipleship with Jesus. Amen? Come on, amen? Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness to us. Now, God, we pray that you would take these words and cause them to take root deep down in our hearts and that you would get the glory in our story. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen, and amen. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Grab that. I think there's a, uh, come on, come on. All right. Um, I also want you all to be praying for Pastor Jill and I. We have quite a bit of traveling coming up over the next month. Um, I will be preaching uh, uh, at Hope College in Michigan. Uh, for their chapel. We got to leave out of here in a couple of hours and, and go and preach to the students up there tomorrow morning. I'll be preaching their Monday morning chapel. Y'all pray. I got to get in and get out. They, they move quick over there at Hope College. So y'all be praying for your pastor. And then I'll be traveling as well. Some of the trustees have asked me to share with y'all when I'm traveling. So I want you all to know I'll be traveling uh, to uh, Fresno, California to preach for, pa for Bishop uh, Paul Binion and his anniversary service. And then uh, I'll be traveling to Virginia as well. Um, so y'all be praying for us. Uh, we're gonna have some amazing, awesome preachers over the next uh, couple of Sundays. I'll be here next Sunday though. Don't worry, I'll be here next Sunday. Uh, but we're gonna have some awesome and amazing preachers over the next couple of Sundays while Pastor Jill and I are out ministering the gospel. So I want y'all to be praying for us. Keep us lifted in your prayers, amen? Come on, amen? All right, welcome Reverend Carrie Ann as she comes to pray the benediction. Praise the Lord for the message, uncommon favor. And we thank God for giving us a servant who is so able to present the message to us. My prayer is that everyone has received something that they will take with them as the week goes on. Remember, as you go through, through the week, stack the stones, consider the cry, and watch the witness. I'm here to present the benediction, so if you would... And if you're able to stand, please stand with me. I'm going to read for you Jude 24 through 25. It says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Father, we thank you. 
that you are with us during our challenges, during our struggles, that you're with us, Lord God. When we're experiencing issues, you are with us with uncommon favor. Father, be with us this week. Lead us and guide us and remind us, Lord God, to remember, Lord, what we heard today. Remember that in the time of trouble, you are an ever-present help. God, we bless your name and we magnify you for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.